Welcome to the podcast. This episode is brought to you by Maison Beljansky, providing natural supplements for helping your body's healing and wellness, inspired by over 40 years of groundbreaking research. Your picture is so serious. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Man, your your beard is longer every time I see you. Believe it or not, I cut it. I used to have it at the belly button, and I cut it twice already. Oh my gosh, that thing grows like. Um, it keeps going. It keeps like, going. It keeps going. <laughs> I don't you? know. I, I have no idea. Good, good, man. I, I have no idea why I left that girl like this. I don't know. Probably I was uh, I don't know some philosopher or something in my past life. But I don't like books anymore. So, anyways, <laughs> yeah, you you look like uh, like a Tai Chi master or something, you know, somebody from uh, Asia, a, a Qigong master or a philosopher from Asia. Probably, man. But at the airport, they think differently. Um, I just <laughs> went the other day to uh, uh, a month ago. I would have to go to pick up a car in San Jose. And this lady from TSA saw me and she told the other guys, she pointed at me and I'm like, I probably look like a Saudi or something or terrorist or something, but it was bad. They, they, they touched my balls. Oh yeah. They, they went, they, they, they went they, for they, all the jewels, huh? They went for all the jewels. And I just, <laughs> he asked me, do you want to do it in private? I said, no, do it here in front of everybody, you know, and that's it. Um, at the end, I just tell everybody, oh, he's just making sure that there's a real package. And yeah, everybody was good after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 good, that's too bad that, uh, that that kind of discrimination still happens in this country. You know, it's kind of crazy, actually. Actually, all over the world, it happens. That's the crazy part. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's everywhere. How you doing, senor? Good, man. Nice good. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. We're we're rolling here, so we're just gonna roll with it. For everybody okay. who doesn't know, um, this is Arturo Gaitan. Um, but you you go by a different name now. No, I'm still have the same name. Uh, yeah. But people call me different things. Yeah. What do people call you? <laughs> oh shit. Uh, oh sorry. Can, you, am I allowed to say bad words sometimes? Yeah, yeah. You can cuss. I wouldn't have you on because I know I know you like to cuss sometimes. Okay. Okay. It's not that I like, it's, I, I've been programmed like that, you know, like my mother programmed me like that. But anyways, <laughs> I don't know, they call me different things like creature, magical creature, art, weirdo, uh, so many different things. <laughs> some others, I, I, I don't want to mention it. <laughs> art, so you, st you go by art, you still go by art. Oh yeah, art, yes, art, Arturo. Yeah, so, so those who don't know, uh, Arturo Gaitan is, um, was, one of my very early uh, spiritual teachers, mentors, uh, friends, family members, somebody who taught me so much uh, about spirituality, about my life. I tell people all the time, Arturo, that one of the things that I'm so grateful for that you taught me was how to think for myself. You know, as a young, I think I met you probably when I was around 20, 20 or 21. Um, so young, oh, yeah. you know, 20 year old that's trying to figure out life, getting on my feet, right? I moved to San Diego, trying, you know, starting over, really diving into health and spirituality and, um, and met you. And one of the things that you talk so much with me about in teaching me meditation and how to think for myself and how so many of us, like you were just talking about, all of us are programmed, right? We're programmed by our parents, we're programmed by our society, by our schools, by our teachers, by belief systems that dictate and, de and determine our lives. And helping me recognize that at an early age and then saying, look, it's so essential that we learn how to think for ourselves because if we don't, we're just doing everybody else's thinking and going along in this life unconsciously, you know, with all of these behaviors and patterns that are very often sabotaging our lives and leading to so much pain and suffering. And so, you know, it's one of the things that um, I really attribute so much, you know, uh, gratitude towards you for, for helping me think, think for myself, really. Um, I think it's such a gift. Yeah. Yeah. No, 
No, thank you. Thank you, Nate. And I think that is essential. Like you said, that's the perfect word. It is essential that every human should be allowed and, and teach, you know, like they don't teach us that. And actually, it is very unfortunate to see that even in the education system and everywhere since little, you've been programmed to don't think for yourself. It's like a they have all these expectations that has nothing to do with your true self, you know? And what every time that, even in, in, in elementary school, I was freaking kicked from seven elementary school because they actually told my mom that I was retarded. <laughs> because they, I, 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 I don't know, I don't know if I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> they told that to my mom and it's like, well, I think that she thought at some point because it was very difficult to deal with me because I was the, the, the kid that asked questions, you know? They asked questions since little and, and questioning everything and seeing the world differently and coming up with all these ideas and, and consciousness and particles and seeing things like, okay, this kid is delusional. This kid might be retarded because he doesn't answer when we ask them a question. He asks questions. But he, but he doesn't answer. Well, I was busy in my mind, you know. I was busy, and the teachers asked me questions about the stupid things. And and in my perception, they speak very slow during that time. Yeah. And it's like they're doing. My, they're asking me a question in a slow motion. Arturo, I'm like, oh my gosh, when is going to happen? So I didn't. I didn't answer anything. So yeah, they sent me to the doctor. Fortunately, they were not pushing kids to take medication. So. I was out of medication for a long time. Um, little challenge, not no, because no the medication. I said that little challenge because I guess that we, I am one of the very first now called ADHD and all these kids, hyperactive kids. And I, I was like that my entire life. What like completely red spectrum, you know, it's like a, actually they thought that I was autistic too. Probably I am. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, you're I, probably I, a little autistic, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I have reactions sometimes, you know, like when people touch you, like, what the fuck? I mean, I, I've, I've been with you and, and seen your laugh attacks where you just can't stop laughing for like, I've probably seen you laugh nonstop for like 10 or 15 minutes. And when I'm, when you're have a laugh attack and then I'm just laughing and then it just goes on forever, but you literally have laugh. I've seen you have laugh attacks where you can't stop laughing. Um, I don't know if that's autism or not, but uh, I, I, I'm handling that better. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm mixing anger now, <laughs> mixing anger with the laugh attack, so I can stop the laugh attack, so I can call myself a little grounding about how the world is. So okay, I, I'm effing angry now. Okay, that's good, and, and then the laugh continue. But yeah, it's getting be better. Now See, you I'm right now, didn't one you? right now. <laughs> now you grew up in uh, didn't you grow up in mexico city if i remember yes i did mexico, mexico city, city. Mm -hmm. and so and that's where you got kicked out of seven elementary schools yeah from church too yeah yeah i remember you used to question the question the preachers and the pastors about god and they wouldn't answer your questions yeah yeah and they were lying you know i had to expose them because they were lying. About you know, what? during that time, I, I, I believe that once God talked talk to me, you know, what I, I'm going to refer to God, it could be for people like universe, whatever they believe, you know, I, I discovered that, that human beings can be live, can believe whatever the heck we want. That's the truth. We can believe whatever we want. At the end, it's a belief. But uh, um, yeah, I, I, I remember in a mass, this uh priest was uh getting I, i've been observing things during my, my grandma always take me to the church and i've been observing things like uh, oh there is a technique the guy start talking they make them feel miserable they make them feel guilty and then they pass the little basket to get money <laughs> so every time that he does that he passed the basket i'm like, like okay so one day I had the opportunity, well, I was next to this little uh, chubby kid that supposed to say that he was very happy to be there and he got stuck. So I grabbed the mic and I just say, say it out loud that the priest was lying to them, that uh, he's <laughs> calling them sinners and, and because they, and then the, he's going to pass the basket and, 
And I remember I said, you know, God talked to me. <laughs> I said, God talked to me and explained me that, you know, nobody's a sinner. Like if you make mistakes, if you do any of these sinners, when you go to sleep, the metaphorical meaning of you going to sleep as a human is death. And if you have the opportunity to open your eyes the very next day, it means that God forgave you. And now you, it's your choice to don't repeat whatever the heck you did the previous day, you know? <laughs> so they kicked me out. Have you heard of PEMF therapy for cancer? Well, this podcast is brought to you by Dr. Pollock, and he wants to share with you the groundbreaking research of pulsed electromagnetic field therapy in the treatment of cancer. Studies show PMF therapy can help control the cancer process and give safe, non-toxic, and non-invasive symptom management. PMF therapy may enhance other cancer support and treatments, lower inflammation, and promote tissue healing. Studies show it's possible to improve your general well-being and recuperate from surgery, radiation, and chemo better and more quickly. Embrace a comprehensive approach to cancer treatment with PMF therapy, a vital tool on your path to prevention, treatment, and recovery. For caring and professional guidance and recommendations from Dr. Pollock, go to drpollock.com forward slash intro to cancer. That's drpawluk.com forward slash intro to cancer. <laughs> Well, you were speaking words of wisdom for sure. I think more and more people are waking up to the spiritual truth that, you know, we're not born sinners as as many, um, unfortunately, you know, as, as beautiful as Christianity is and as much as I love Jesus and Jesus' teachings and learn a lot from him and learn from the Bible, I, st I study the Bible every day right now, you know, there are, there are things in the religion aspect of Christianity that just like you said, I think keep people living in fear, in constant fear, and actually prevent people from waking up to their highest self, to the highest truth, to you know having a true connection with God, to having that true realization of God. I think it's that it is that fear and some of those teachings that are preventing so many good-hearted, you know, caring. Uh, sincere people from actually achieving what they're trying to achieve, which is having, you know, um, a, a pure life, a good life, uh, a life of deep meaning and purpose, a life where they feel a true connection with their creator. Um, and it is that, it's that being told that you're a sinner, there's nothing you can do about it, you know, you can, uh, Jesus basically died on the cross for your sins, so you can pretty much sin all you want, but um, you know, ask for forgiveness and Jesus has already forgiven you, but there's nothing that will get you into heaven unless you believe in Jesus. Um, otherwise you're going to go to hell and burn no matter how good you do on the planet. <laughs> it's like, what? Right. <laughs> there's like, ever since I was a kid also, there was nothing about that that ever made sense to me. And I was like, there's something so untrue about this. Um, and something similar happened to me when I was a kid. And I have to, I'll have to ask my mom because I, I don't remember the exact story, but there was something similar where, I remember as a young kid being in a church and then being kicked out and then never going back again. And so it was like, never went back to church as a kid with my family for whatever reason. Um, I have to, I'll have to ask my mom and, and figure out. I think that, that you told me that you tried to burn the church during that time, but I, I, I might be just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I think I was three or four years old and I was spray painting uh, my neighbor's trailer, you know, brake lights and the, and I was out with the older kids and they probably, you know, convinced me to do it or something or my rebellious nature just did it. I don't know. And you know, the, the cops, the cops came and got us and brought us home. And my mom wanted that cop to, uh, I still remember it. She wanted him to scare me so bad so that I would never do anything like that again. Well, it didn't work, obviously. It didn't work, I know, I know it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> he, took out, he took out his handcuffs and he slammed them. We had a wooden round, I remember a round table, and he slammed them on the dinner table. And he goes, if you ever do anything like that again, you're, these are gonna be put on you and you're going to jail and blah, blah, blah. And I, I remember being scared as a kid, but for some reason it didn't, it didn't scare me enough. <laughs> I know, I, I know, I know, I know so many, I'm, I know many stories about you, so <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. No, yeah, it, it is, it is, you know, it is unfortunate because I, I, I believe in Jesus. I always believe my entire life. 
you know, uh, I, I practice uh, uh, kind of his life since, you know, I was a 12 years old, all obsessed about it. But I didn't want to believe because they forced me to believe. I want to believe because I saw, I saw, you know, I look up to him. I, I look up to that, 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 that character. I look up to these things. And, you know, like uh, many teachers, you know, like Buddha and so many others, but uh, uh, it's very interesting because I always feel attracted and I'm, I didn't like the fact that I have to, <laughs> I remember when they used to tell you when you were little and they said like, uh, the only way for you to communicate with God or, or have some contact with God is through us. Like, who the F you are? <laughs> who the F are you to, to tell me that? I, you know, the dude is talking to me since little, you know, it's like, <laughs> but anyways, you know, you start growing up and you realize more things, but it goes back, Nate, I think that it goes back to all this programming that we're having, you know, it's like, a, it's everywhere. I, I recognize very early in my life that uh, uh, I had a little perspective of theory because I, I, I remember uh, the very first things that they start telling us, including science, which, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking against religion. I think that we need religion and we need science. And I think that nowadays I can see how these systems or whatever the heck is happening around the world, they want you to be a godless. Why? Because at least when you have God in your heart, in your mind, or you have some type of a structure, you are a more solid person. But it's, it's, like, a, it's, it's like there is a plan for you to be godless so that way they can control you easier and uh, you're a little mindless creature that just walking over this earth where they don't want you to be healthy. They don't want you to be over 60 or 70. And, and they, they, they want to raise wisdom. That's what they want. They want to raise wisdom. They want to, they just want a little like a, a strength force and that's it. But uh, it was very interesting because I remember uh, around seven years old, I used to watch my grandma deliver babies. You know, she was a doctor and and she was uh, delivering babies and I was looking through the window, you know, and finally she grabbed me and she, she saw me and I'm like, oh, fuck, she discovered me. And then I, I remember that uh, uh, she grabbed me and then she grabbed my ear and she's like, are you a pervert? I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? And she's like, do you like crutches? I'm like, yeah, I do, but not that way, you know, it's like. <laughs> So yeah. she asked me like, why, why, why you're watching? This is private, and and she's like, why you're watching? I'm like, and I'm look, imagine my answer, you know, the light. It's <laughs> like the what light? light? <laughs> I'm like, I used to, I don't know, in my imagination or whatever, or or in my eyes, I I see this little ball of light, different ones, different sizes, going on top of the belly button. And it's going down, going down, going down. And suddenly when, when the baby comes out and breathe for the first time, it goes in, you know, it's like a boom. And I'm like, that was fascinating for me because it made me understand that in order to have a human with a life, in order to have life, <clears throat> there is a condition. It's a condition of some energy, some light of somehow, I think we call it soul this time, right? let's call it soul, the soul and the body is the condition for love and life, for being alive. And, but also that is gonna trigger or amygdalas and everything to have this survival mode and everything is gonna be conditioning. And that's why we condition everything. We, we are conditioned, we condition others, we condition our love. We come, we're coming from, we're beings that we're coming from conditional love. And everybody's always looking for unconditional love and unconditional love, in my perception, in my, my theory is that it's very short, you know? You need to learn to live a little bit longer with it because the only part where you are in unconditional love is when you detach yourself from something. And that is the moment that you are living pure unconditional vibration. And, uh, and that's what I understood when I was a kid. But of course, what kid understand that without being called, okay, it's crazy. Don't listen to him. He has a lot of uh, a great imagination. And you know, I was very happy to have a great imagination. He's retarded. He's autistic. Kick him out of the church. Kick him out of school. No, it's amazing what you're saying. Um, 
you know, this is in the, the ancient yogic teachings in the, from the Vedas and Upanishads, from the ancient spiritual texts of India, of when the soul comes in to the human, to the body. And this is something you, you, I remember you used to say to me, uh, it's these simple teachings that have stuck with me all these years. One of the things you would say is, you know, you're a human being for a reason, human being, human physical part, the body, right? Yes. And the being, the spiritual part, the soul. It's like, oh yeah, human being. Okay, that makes sense, right? And then, and then you talk more about that. Well, you know, you look at these ancient texts from India and, and these incredible teachings of the soul that comes into the body, just like you're talking about, and why we as human beings, the, the reason we experience so much suffering and anger and hatred and resentment and fear and all these things, challenging lives and painful lives and all these things that we go through, aside from the, the karma conversation or the law of, you know, the, the law of cause and effect conversation, is they teach that the soul becomes attached to the body mm -hmm. and thinks that the body is everything, right? That the human is everything. The being then thinks it's the human and forgets that it's the being, right? The soul, this yep. infinite, God-connected, you know, um, omnipresent part of ourselves, the higher self or, or our soul or our spirit, then comes into this human experience and goes, oh, I'm a body, I'm limited, I'm physical, I get pain and I, I die and gets attached to it and believes this is who I am. And the yeah. whole journey of, of, you know, coming to our highest self and our, our spiritual awareness and freedom and liberation is recognizing that we are the soul, that we are infinite, that we are one with God, that we are a child of God, right? That we are not this body and that when this body drops and goes back to the earth, our soul moves on infinitely ever growing, ever expanding, you know, ever moving and never dying. And that alone creates liberation and freedom in the mind and frees us from all suffering, right? This is what the Buddha taught uh, in, in his way. And this is what Buddhism is about. This is what the great Indian rishis and masters have taught in their own ways. And this is what, you know, you've discovered in your own life since you were a kid, right? Going through all of I'm your... I'm not the only crazy... What you're telling me that I'm not the only crazy one here? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's crazy to think, and believe it or not, my people might think like, uh, is he for real? Like, you know that I, I promised myself when I was that age, at seven, when I accepted my, my destiny, I promise myself that I will never read books, you know? I know how to read, but I, you know I don't read books. I, I've i been trying to just, people call it channel it, channeling, and I've been doing that my entire life. It's, it's like a books haven't been part of my uh, journey because I supposed to keep everything that comes to me as pure as I can. You know, it's, it's a belief system that I have. So when you're telling me all these things like, a, really, seriously, I'm feeling here alone and it's like, <laughs> my entire life and all these things probably is already in all the books. I'm just, probably I'm just channeling the books. It's, it's, it's crazy because, you know, it's so funny that I came across to the controversial bookstore, the first metaphysical bookstore since 1963 in San Diego. And when they were about to, to close, I, 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 I got it. I got, I got the bookstore, you know, it was very bad business, but uh, I wanted to keep the books for, for people because a lot of people get benefits from that and people ask me like Arturo you don't like books what what what, what you're doing I'm like I have no fucking idea what I'm doing but I'm just gonna keep it alive the guy and the I, guy who doesn't read books ends up buying and owning a bookstore <laughs> I know right <laughs> but you were but you were teaching there though right you were doing you were doing psychic readings and teachings and and all kinds of stuff I mean that's what you were involved with when you were there uh yeah 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 i've been i i've been doing a lot i developed i think that i was 13 years old when i developed some uh, uh emotional healing tools and a method i created a method and and i i remember that i started applying it to me because i i was 13 um i remember that i was so depressed 
to be honest, I was so effing depressed of life and humans. I was so disappointed at life. You know, my hands used to be very, I was a kid and, and my hands always get very hot still. And I just wanted to put it in people because I felt their suffering, you know, I felt that I, and I guess that at this point would be, I wanted to naturally heal the person, you know, from illnesses or something. But my mom always hit me and beat the shit out of me every time and asked me to shut up every time that I'm opening my mouth. And uh, <clears throat> I remember when I was a nine, I, I, I went to the kitchen. I said, okay, that's it. I'm going. And, and I became very suicidal and, and at nine, you know, it's like a, I, I don't have a shame to say that I, I became very suicidal. I went and, and grabbed a knife and tried to stab myself like, I don't know, eight, nine times. And, and the, the knife didn't go through because I grabbed a butter knife. So, <laughs> so I, I grabbed a butter knife. I didn't know that that didn't go through. But, you know, you watch movies and everything goes through. So it didn't go through. So it failed and Four years later, at 13, I was so depressed again because I was feeling so much hate, but I didn't know why. And I, I, I never felt it in my life like that. And to, be, to make this story short, I, I went into my father's house and I took uh, pills, like a, a bottle with 90 pills. I just took them all and keep passing it, passing it, and have a big belly. And 30 minutes later, I'm feeling great. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, dying is great, it is beautiful, but they, but you're not dying, you know, you just expect to die. It's so stupid, I'm sorry, so stupid. And, and then after that, you sit in front of the bottle, and you're just looking at the bottle, and in one of those, I start reading, you know, see, you don't have the tendency to read, so I, I read. I took vitamins, <laughs> I took fucking vitamins, man, and I was like, uh, okay, so I, I'm the, with the jitters, for a couple of days and but I understood so I start downloading these methods nowadays are methods and and I discovered why I was feeling hate and 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 I was hating my mom I I felt hate towards my mom she used to be the crap out of me every day and I feel the hate and I don't want to feel like that you know I prefer for her to hit me that me keeping feeling like that in my heart I wasn't that person but I was and I decided to start applying these methods. I started doing womb regressions to me, karmic disconnections to myself and working on myself to reprogramming. I was a kid, I was recording in tapes in those Waltmans. Waltmans, I think that is called. Oh, the Walkman, you... the Walkman, yeah. Walkman, Walkman, Walkman yes. Yeah. And, and so I just like uh, start reprogramming myself to, to be a better kid so my mom doesn't beat the crap out of me. So I didn't notice that I was discovering a method that nowadays it helps me to help people. But uh, yeah, that's that's how everything happened, man. And then I decided not to take that much of vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with the cold and flu season here, it's critically important that we enhance and strengthen our immune systems. Yes, would you agree? The problem is, though, that there's so much confusion out there when it comes to what actually works for our bodies and for our health. Well, I'll tell you what I used. I use Maison Beljansky's wellness products. Maison Beljansky's products are backed by science to not only help empower the immune system, but can support detoxification and contribute to our overall health. Coming from Europe, the all natural Beljansky formulas are now available in the United States and are recommended by top doctors everywhere. A lot of the colleagues I work with, functional medicine practitioners that work with patients with all kinds of diseases, are recommending Maison Beljansky's products to their very own patients. As a special sponsor of this podcast, Maison Beljansky has included a very special discount offer for all of my listeners. You can get 15% off your first order using the promo code Nathan. And you'll always enjoy free shipping when you order four products or more. You can grab your wellness products today at MaisonBeljansky.com. That's M-A-I-S-O-N-B-E-L-J-A-N-S-K-I. MaisonBeljansky.com. And use code Nathan for 15% off. Yeah, I remember you telling a story, I think. 
of your mom like taking a broomstick and like beating you so hard with a broomstick is that right do i remember that oh right? yeah that's what just one of them but yeah <laughs> it's so crazy that you i mean this really spiritually advanced kid you know comes into a family that's and your dad with all his issues right and you know your challenges there between your mom and your dad into this really challenging family and here you are this really kind of spiritually advanced kid who just wants to help and love the world and you know getting beat and going through all these very challenging experiences as a kid but it's i mean i know in my own life you know all the many of the challenges that i went through as well right um drug addiction and homelessness and in fights and you know kicked out of my house and so many issues almost dead at 17 and like i look back and and i look at that and i go now now i understand it right i needed to go through that i needed to go through that karma i needed to have those experiences i needed to learn from that i need to learn how to forgive you know my own parents forgive myself forgive myself for hurting so many others right and forgive others who hurt me and to know what it feels like to be lost and lonely and afraid and addicted and you know all these challenging things that literally millions and millions and probably billions of people go through in their lives and then come out the other side of it and learn how to be free from that right um and so it's like i i'm actually grateful for it now uh, where there was a few years, I think even by the time I met you, I don't even know that I was, I had come to like terms yet with my past. Cause I was like a different, I like right. buried it away. <laughs> right. And I don't, I probably didn't even tell you about it until, uh, probably a couple of years of actually, you know, spending time with you. Um, cause there was a lot of shame there. There's a lot of shame of all the stuff that I went through and it took me quite a while to fully heal and learn from that. But that's, that's really part of, I think our spiritual growth is learning from our mistakes, our challenges, the, the, the brutal experiences that we go through and we can either hold on to them and let them dictate our lives and yeah. live a sad, mean, angry life, or we can learn from them and forgive and grow and find ways to turn that pain into purpose right yeah um which is what you help people do um no man i i'm proud of you like you seriously i remember you the first time that we met and i was doing a presentation and you you were so skinny like very skinny this kid very skinny kid and everybody's trying to talk to me and then you you come and you said i will never forget you said how do you do that <laughs> and I'm like, uh, do what? You know, I'm literal. <laughs> like, do what? That thing. And you said that thing. <laughs> like, what thing is like uh, the feeling that you made all of us to have. And then we start talking. And then you told me, you started, you know, with the time, you start telling me your story, all your stories, you know, incendiary or something like that. So many different things that you've been through. And I remember that you were very serious about change. You know, you were very serious about change. And I see you now, and I'm telling you, man, from my heart, I'm so proud to see uh, what you come up with, you know, for yourself, by yourself. And, uh, and, and, and I think that uh, I'm very happy that we met and uh, you know, that we have the opportunity to, to touch a little life because you've been touching more lives you know that's what we do humans see humans we have the capacity to touch a life and make it better or make it worse mm. it's all a choice it's all a choice but also the person that is going to be touched needs to be willing you know it's all about the willingness how, how much the person is in the need to have that change instead of being afraid of the change how much of that and uh, no I, I i'm proud of you man like seriously like uh you when you told me everything i'm like uh, okay you you need to change you need something if that's what you want you know because we're nobody to judge anybody if somebody wants to be uh, uh messed up okay you know that's what they want with their life is it, their choice the problem that i'm having is when there is not a choice when you're being programmed or something and those programs are dictating your life and you don't even have the capacity to have a choice, that's a problem. I, I noticed that because everybody says and give for granted, oh, we all have a choice. No, you know, in my studies of, of my own thing, 
I discovered a long time ago that people really is like they don't have a choice. The programs are so strong and so hard that literally is like you don't have a choice. You just continue going. You you continue existing because that's that's it. That's all about. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm remembering that first time. Thank you for for saying that, and and thank you for helping me those three or four years that you know we were together almost every single day. I mean, there was so yeah. much that you helped me discover in myself that uh, helped me transform my life for the better in so many in so many incredible ways. Um, I've I've mentioned. I know we were you know we fell out of touch, and we can talk a little bit about that too. It, like we and then i just saw you for the first time i don't know how many years uh in san diego a couple months ago which was really I was in san diego i was like i need to reach out to arturo like i just had this feeling that i needed to, to reconnect with you um but i want to go back to the the first time that i met you i think i was already so i was getting into real estate and i was with tom and those guys and and i think how i went to that presentation you were giving was like they're like hey this this guy's giving this amazing presentation at this hotel we got to go check it out so i think i was with tom and them i can't i can't remember exactly but yeah um and and like you were getting involved with starting a new business with these guys or some new some new um marketing co- network marketing company i think that was being launched at the time um and like yeah we gotta go listen so i remember sitting there in the audience and just going this is the most amazing presenter i've ever seen in my life (laughs) like what is going on here it was like you know small room probably 50 60 people in there right 70 people in a little hotel room and it was like you had everybody just laughing and motivated inspired and crying and it was like this is the Mexican Tony Robbins <laughs> on stage here, like, but, but sp- even more spiritual focus, you know, and that's, I don't remember coming to you and saying that, like, how did you do that? <laughs> but I can imagine at that stage of my life, I was already a couple years into like yes. my health and healing and spiritual journey that what I saw you do was so remarkable. It was just like, I could see myself coming up and be like, like how do you do that? <laughs> Little did I know that, you know, we would get involved in business together and then you'd become, you know, my spiritual mentor over the next few years. Introduce me to my wife who's in the other room. You know, we had <laughs> I know, I know. children, you, <laughs> you officiated our wedding in Encinitas and uh, were a big energetic support with our daughter being born and so many, so many amazing things, you know, in, in such a short time. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the long conversation sitting with you where I was going back to Oceanside. I think it was, I think this was a point where, well, actually, here's what I want to say. I want to say that one of the things that amazed me about you and gave me so much insight into our human capabilities, our human being possibilities, just even just little tastes of it was how I would see you say, okay, we need this. We need this. We need an office, right? For this new business, but we don't have any money. And you're like, I'm going to get us an office. And I'm like, what? (laughs) And then like three days later, we have an office with no money. (laughs) And it's like, you know, you're like, yeah, I just sat in in meditation or, you know, quietly and, and uh, visualize this thing and visualize us having the office. And then this guy came to me and said, call this person. I called this person and boom, boom, boom. And like three days later, we're in an office with no money down right? And like the perfect place we need. I would see those kinds of things happen, these manifestation things that you would say, oh, we need this, we need that. Yes. You're like, okay, I'll do it. Even without, you know, the, the resources that most people are like, oh, I don't have money. I don't have this. I don't have that. I can't do it. You always found a way to make it happen. And, and it was always through very unique things. And it was, if I remember, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I, if I remember, it was usually you would be meditating on it and visualizing it and, and going through the creation process and then things would happen, right? Like yes. you'd, you'd get ideas or inspirations, call this person, do this, go there, go over here, drive there. And you would just follow those. And then all of a sudden it was like, boom, 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 boom. And we have it. And because of that, because of seeing you do that firsthand, you know, I, I realized the possibility of that. And that sense I've done in my life, you know, over the last 15 plus years, again, and again, and again, and again, and again, as well. People talk about the law of attraction, but don't 
I think don't really understand like the true power that we have when we're really yes. connected and yes. and really focused on what we want that we can we can create and manifest anything almost instantly yes no it's yeah it's funny i still doing it actually i have a little club i have I, i've been teaching uh, uh i started years ago but this year i decided to make a club and i have this little group and everybody when i teach them how to do certain things i have this lady she's funny she's in her 60s and she says i don't know why i'm signing in this shit, but uh i don't believe in everything but whatever <laughs> she actually said the word fuck it so it's funny because I, i'm teaching her something and to the group and she calls us like a three days after when she applied what i teach <laughs> she says like uh she, she she called francesca uh, Francesca, she managed my time and everything. She's like, uh, Francesca, uh, yes, who's this? So and so, oh, okay, what's going on? And like, uh, she's like, literally, Francesca says, she says, what the F? Like, what the F what? Like, that thing that he teaches really works. I said, she said, like, what do you mean? Like, uh, well, I received a phone call three days ago from the social security. And they told me that they owe me 30 grand for years and and there was a glitch on the system and, and she's like are you sure that those 30 grand are for me and she's like uh, yeah so we're gonna send you the 30 grand and she's like uh, i got my 30 grand <laughs> just like out of nowhere something that's supposed to be missing but anyways um yes i i've been practicing manifesting without knowing all natural uh and when you mentioned the law of attraction uh, to be honest, during a, during some time when I knew all these things and I saw people trying everything, I saw people going for the law of attraction. I saw people going for the power of the now, you know, power of now. And I'm like, a, I started like a bullshit, bullshit. No, no, like a, I understand you need to enjoy life as you go. But see, God, universe, whatever you want to call it, it gives us the eyes on the front. It means that in order to have a life, you need to have future. You see the future. I know they said that the future is not there yet, the past is gone. Well, no, look, you cannot turn back. So it means that if you really try, the past is gonna hurt you. The past is gonna hurt you. So you have prohibited to live in the past, but you need to live in the future and that will make your now. The power of now is like this, it's gone. Every second is gone. There's no power in the now. The power is in the future and that will make your now enjoyable. And one of the things that I, I, I notice and I always teach a lot of my teachings, you might remember this, instead of the law of attraction, I call it the law of distraction. Yeah. I call it the law of distraction and the law of distraction pretty much what it is, is, is very, you need focus. You need power of focus in order to achieve whatever the heck you want. Of course, there is certain law, you know, we live in a universe that is quantum, which means that an amount of particles will determine if things happen or not for you. And in order to create and make those particles in the same position to for you to achieve your manifesting, you need to focus, you need some power of focusing. And your focus is everywhere. The world is designed to get you out of your focus. So it's the law of distraction. So the less things you have, the more distractions you have, the less focus you have. Uh, it's automatic. A lot of people think I need to focus more and they making the effort, but they still have the same distractions. There is a way to really start clearing yourself, your vibration from attracting those distractions. It's not it's, it's, it's energetics, but it's, it's not just a discipline. The energetics will bring you a discipline. The more that you get rid of distractions, the higher your power is of focus and then your manifesting power is going to happen. You know, yes, like you said, uh, if I need an office, my mischievous mind is like, a, okay, I need an office. Where do I want the office? I want in this place. Okay, let's just start seeing who's, what's available right there. And then, you know, I call the person like, a, hey, who's the owner of this person? But you need to talk to us. No. So I research the owner. I go to the owner and says, listen, I need an office, an office in your plaza. Um, can I have one? Yeah, it's this much. I don't have money, but I'm going to have it. Just give me a month and I will get you money. I'm like, 
they started laughing at me like are you for real i barely speak english right i'm like <laughs> somehow they give it to me and and yeah and it's not the first time this happened before uh, uh fortunately i don't need to do that anymore <laughs> i come up with the money now <laughs> before <laughs> and uh i do it more in the normal way but i still with my mischievous manifesting yeah i have something that is called the manifestos club and it's a small group of people and it's fun it's fun but yeah you're right i i've been operating like that my entire life and uh, you said tony robbins no not really i'm gonna tell you one thing about i i think that motivation is important but motivation doesn't last motivation doesn't last i i i really want to make a difference in people and long time ago i decided that i accepting who i really am and I decided that I need to help whoever is ready, humans, any human to become their best and do the healing and reprogramming that they need to go deeper, to fix the problem, not to just cover the problem. You know, motivation, everything is motivation. You know, your family is motivation. Your soul is motivation. The world is motivation or not. It, it at the end is being dictated, but yeah, very nice for you to remind me that. <laughs> Thank you. Well, yeah, and you mentioned something I want to hear your thoughts on um, about living in the future and creating the future so that you have joy now in the present. The, the contradiction to that that I've, I would say that I, that I see now is, you know, and I think who points this out really well is some of these great Indian teachers that I'm speaking of, Yogananda's, you know, one of them, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar is another one. There's some really great um, spiritual teachers who I would say are enlightened beings who share, you know, just, just profound wisdom, really pulling back from the ancient times, you know, the Bhagavad Gita, the Ashtavakra Gita, some of these great spiritual texts that are just incredible. Like just reading them and meditating on them can really open so many powerful dimensions within ourselves, but that one of the conversations I've been listening to and really meditating on a lot lately is desires, right? And desires that if you think about it, any desire, especially that comes from our ego or from our human, from our mind, any desire, whether it's, you know, a new house, a new car, a, um, a great job, a great, you know, relationship, a great this, a great that, whatever that your desire is, that, you know, you want to be a professional basketball player, whatever that is, like, it's so great to you during that whole time until you finally achieve it. And once you achieve it, there's nothing left there, right? Like, and you see this with, you know, astronauts who basically come back from space, like totally depressed and suicidal, because they achieved their greatest life thing they've been working for for their whole life, and now what? Now they have nothing left, right? Or nothing left to live for. Or even people who get, get that house. Well, yeah, they got the house, right? I'm happy for like a week. Now, now the reality sets in of, oh, we got to maintain it. We got to spend more money on it. We got to clean it. We got to, oh, it falls apart. Oh, we got to do these things. And all of a sudden, you know, reality sets in. They're no longer happy with that house. And two years right. go by and now they want a bigger house. They want a better house. Oh, now they're dreaming of the next house. That, that's when I'm going to be happy right? Or that relationship, that's when I'd be happy when I have that final person. And so the challenge I see with, with like manifesting the tricky area, I think we have to walk is like, is the desire coming from our ego, this, this physical desire? Because I can tell you, I've achieved so many of the dreams I've set out to achieve, and there is no lasting happiness in any of them at all. The happiness is fleeting. So where happiness has to come from, I, I truly believe is in our soul and in having a true connection to, to God, to our highest self, to our highest truth. And, and I think that's the only thing in my uh, belief so far that actually can bring us true lasting joy and happiness is not living in the future or the past actually, but living you know, if we want to call it the now or the present or whatever, but not being, a t we can create from the present thinking about the future. We can create the things that we need, 
but it's the attachment to those things and the thinking that those things are going to finally bring me happiness and not being happy now with what we have, which is causing everybody suffering, if you think about it, right? I think that it is, all that is very good and it's great. I, I think that, you know, I have my theories. <laughs> I have my theories. And uh, one of the things, the very first thing that I notice is there is a difference between desires and purpose. Mm. And uh, purpose is big. Purpose is almost like a eternal happiness, you know, it pretty much. It gives you that vibe. It gives you that vibration, that, that energy. Uh, I don't, I never seen, I, I noticed limitations in some belief systems, you know, if it's a form of limitation to think that a desire, it would limit you to your happiness. I, I think that some people have no high vibration with belief systems or, 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 or they have no purpose yet, but they start with little desires that will get them there. And at some point purpose is going to come for them. I, I really believe that. For me, everything is possible. I believe that if I am possible, everything is possible, right? You know, it's like, if, could, how the hell we are here? We are, and it is possible. So everything is possible. And then we need to convert it into probable. But one of the major things that I've, I feel, and you're right 100% about like, a, you need to have that connection with your soul. You need to have that uh, connection with your higher self, with God, with universe, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't really matter. I always, I always tell people this. I said, there is four main, four main emotions in life for a human. Humans has these four main emotions. Fears, sadness, anger, and happiness. These three, people look at it as negative. They're not negative. They're essentials. They're essentials because they make you to survive. See, fear, sadness, and anger make you make you survive. Everything else comes from there, like uh, frustration from anger, depression from sadness. You know, all the type of fears that we have comes from two main ones: fear of falling, fear of loud noise. Everything comes from there. Fear too. Fear, fear of what? You said fear of failing and fear of what? Uh, falling. Fear of falling. Yes, and loud noise. Do you know when we come out of the womb when we born? Inside of the womb, there is no noise and there is no gravity. So when we come out, when we come out, we experience for the first time and triggers and activates our amygdala to manage our emotions in the future. We feel gravity, which makes us feel falling, and we, we listen to the loud noise. Like, for example, fear to succeed is directly connected to fear of falling or shame is direct connected to fear of loud noise how is but fear of succeed how is fear of succeeding connected to fear of falling because if you fail falling is failing and 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 there is so many different things so they're saying that some people don't choose some people are afraid to succeed because really subconsciously they're afraid to to fail from that success. And so that stems from an innate fear of falling just as like a human being. Uh, yes. We're afraid to fall. Correct. See, and the fourth one, which is happiness. See, these three, I call them essentials. These three emotions are essentials. Now, a lot of people give for granted that happiness is an, es happiness is an essential, but it's not. And this is where you write 100% about, you know, you need your soul, you need God, you need something because what is really happiness? For me, in my little theory that I have here is people mistake happiness and essential when happiness, what it really is, is a fucking consequence, man. It's a consequence. So a consequence of what? It's a consequence of inner peace and when you have inner peace you're naturally happy and yep. see the connection with your creator the connection with the universe the connection with your soul it gives you peace yep. see even even momentary peace like for example you have somebody that is depressed and this is so true that I, I have it done before you give 10 grand to a person let's let, let's go into the material aspect right you give 10 grand to a person 
that person is out of depression automatically, is so happy, is jumping and is so happy, right? It's gonna be momentarily until, like you said, the 10 grand, they're gonna be gone probably faster than any, uh, anything else. And they're gonna be back in their misery, right? But during that time, they think that is the 10 grand, but it's not really the 10 grand, is that the 10 grand are giving them a sense of peace. Yeah. And they're in peace for a moment. It's giving them freedom why... from their it's giving them freedom from their fear. It's giving them a sense of freedom from the emotions, whether the sadness, the depression, they they you forget about those emotions. And so they yeah. have a little bit of freedom from that. Right. It's it's yeah. temporary, it's artificial, it's a fake freedom, but it feels like freedom. It, it, it is freedom momentarily, you know? Why? Because in reality they get they're gonna get busy back to back to get busy with their problems and that will keep them busy and they're gonna, they're not going to have inner peace anymore that's that but but yeah it's, it's just probably a different perspective i i guess that i my experience of at this point being working with thousands and thousands and thousands of people in one-on-one -on -one sessions like i have, I have many one-on-one -on -one sessions in all these years and i i'm telling you it's a process you know it's a process for everybody. Everybody's different. Everybody comes from a different perspective. And sometimes my work is to see like, a, okay, where is the actual root cause of the problem? And I guess that I'm a very bold person in a way that uh, they, they, they say that I'm a ruthless in a way when I have to present them like a, well, this is your bullshit right here. And they're like, a, wait, what? <laughs> like, yeah, this is your, you hire me to show you your bullshit. And I'm showing you your bullshit. And you want to call it differently? Call it differently. I'm calling. I'm gonna call it differently. And they start having their emotions. Oh, you don't care about my emotions? No, I don't. I don't care about your emotions. I care about your good emotions. See, I'm here to help you to go through that. Not everybody needs help, or at least certain help. But a lot of us, we sometimes we just need a little push. Sometimes we just need to have a little help with realizations, but that's pretty much what I figure out uh, in, in all my journey, my entire life, that uh, happiness is a consequence. And if somebody really wants to be happy, they need to learn to be in peace. Yeah. That's what they need to learn. Yeah. Because when you learn, learn to think by yourself and you start learning to calm the fuck down pretty much, right? <laughs> and, and, and remove those distractions that is still your peace, Naturally, you're going to be, see, that's why I have laugh attacks my entire life is because somehow inside I'm in peace. I'm not fully in peace sometimes, you know, uh, especially when you drive in San Diego, you're not in peace. <laughs> <laughs> you practice your angry bird or something like that. <laughs> but but even you learn to enjoy it, too. You know, you, you learn yeah. to to see how you can transform that anger into passion. But yeah, at the end, my, the key in my life, at least for myself, is to learn to be in peace and don't allow anybody to steal it. You need to create that character that when somebody is coming here and trying to steal your peace and try to just like make you miserable because their life is miserable, you have the right to stop, you know? It's not that the hu that human is bad. It could be bad because the truth is there's bad humans too. There's bad humans, good humans. That's the reality of things. You know, I used to think that all humanity was good. I, 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 I still wanted to believe like in my purpose, my life purpose has to do with seeing a better humanity. You know, my, it started with a desire. What's your first desire? I dis, my desire, I was a kid, you know, my desire is to see everybody in peace. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> being peaceful. Like I have peace and like, no, you don't. <laughs> like, you don't have peace. <laughs> like, oh my God. So. But yeah, that's, it starts with a desire and we cannot limit ourselves. If, if a desire is the only thing that somebody has, guess what? That's great because the next thing, that person might get a realization that the next thing could be a purpose and a good purpose if that's what they want. Because yeah. at the end they have a choice. No, it's a good, it's a good point. I think the, the biggest key takeaway there is when you're at peace, you're going to you're going to be happy. And so the key is finding peace. I think also to clarify that, yeah, and I, I also don't mean desires are bad and we shouldn't have them. Um, I guess what I'm getting at is that, or at least what I've discovered in my own life is 
the desires that we have, if, if we can really tune in to our hearts, to our soul, to our highest self, and really discover what our higher desires are, right? And, and meaning that are connected with a higher purpose. And yeah. then, even then, the practice of not getting attached to that, not getting attached to the outcome of that. What in what the great, you know, what the Bhagavad Gita talks about is, is um, uh, bhakti. And bhakti meaning devotional service to God. So whatever work you do, uh, for example, you do it by not attaching to the fruits of your labor. And so by doing that, so good or bad, right? So whatever happens, whatever I do today in my job, in my work, in my family, doesn't matter. Good, bad, mistakes, awesome, amazing. But don't be attached to the outcome. Give that up. Give that up to God, for example. And that gives you that peace, right? I, yeah. a, a simple example of this in my own life lately is, like, I've started playing basketball again. And when I'd play basketball in the past, you know, if, if we'd you win... You have for that? What? You still have knees for that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they're uh, they're holding together, you know, for the time being. Hopefully, forever. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a little knee pain there, but you know, not attached to not attached to the pain, letting that go. But in the past, like, you know, if I wasn't playing well and we lost, like, I, you know, I've 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 regulated and balanced my emotions so well over the last 20 years that if anything bothers me, it takes me five seconds to maybe a couple minutes to be gone with it right very rarely anymore in my life will something i will hold on to as like will keep me in a in a let's call it a negative emotion sadness or whatever so let, let's call it like a, it would it would bother me you know 10 percent, 15 percent for a couple minutes and then let it go well now what i'm doing and this is so funny right talk about the the lessons that god gives you when you commit to something <laughs> as i'm committing to this at an even deeper level even in something as simple as playing basketball that no matter what happens win or lose i stay at peace i don't get super excited about it. oh my god i won yeah i don't and i don't get upset about it. i leave feeling happy and peaceful and content no matter what and so since i started playing again the last few weeks and i have this joke with my daughter with luna my daughter um i've literally lost like every single game that i've played <laughs> every night like i think maybe i've won like two now uh potentially but like i've literally lost like i don't know 20 or 30 games and have just played terrible and like have just you know every single one and i'm like all right i get it thank you this is perfect you know thank you for this teaching for this lesson and i, and I leave every game feeling peaceful, content, happy. I'm like, if I'm going to do something, like don't be attached to the outcome of that, no matter what it is, good or bad, if I want to truly live a life of equanimity and peace and contentment and happiness. And, and for me, it's working. You know, <laughs> I can say that, that it's definitely working. And I can see in the past, simple things or big things, getting upset about something not going the way I wanted it to, or you know, being attached to an outcome of something and yeah, getting so excited, oh, this happened, this is great, we've made all this money or we did all this or helped all these people, this is wonderful. But still, you know, that takes you on this roller coaster, right? And it's like ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs versus this kind of nice, even, you know, peacefulness and happiness in our lives that I think all of us, I think, I think that's the one thing all human beings have in common at a soul level is that we want to we want to be at peace. We want to have happiness. Whether people admit that or not, you know, it's like right, right. No. <laughs> I've really? worked with I've worked with thousands and thousands of people as well, mostly cancer patients, mostly people going through chronic disease. And so I see the dark side, the challenges, the fears, the angers, the resentments, the self loathing, all these things. And every single person in common wants to at least have a sense of peace. And contentment in their life yes. and you know and and there's a way to do that that's what that's what you you teach people and that's what we're saying here is that there is a way to have that in your life it's yes. not necessarily easy but it's simple <laughs> right it's simple but not easy you're right i think you said one you're saying was uh always um keep it simple what was it? um make make yeah yeah say it 
Um, Make it simple. Uh, what was it? Me, me. What the heck? Why I forgot my own? I, you know, that's the thing. <laughs> I remember graphics so good. I come up, uh, apparently, uh, Francesca been recording everything that I said. Has thousands and thousands of pages of wow. content, things that I said. And I don't remember anything. Uh, um, I think it was a two-part sentence. I mean, make it simple. Make it simple, right? That was one of the parts. Be yourself, make it simple. There you go. Be yourself, make it simple. And so make talk about simple. what that means to be yourself, because there's a lot of deep meaning in that when you say be yourself. Yes. So one of the very first things that I notice, and I'm going to put probably a simple example of this. I'm going to put it like, for example, a relationship. Okay. That, that's when you can see that you are yourself or you're not. And, and there is a big misconception, a very messed up misconception about this. Uh, I, I help a lot of people, you know, I, I help people of, I have kids in my practice. If I kids, I have 96 years old ladies that have a problem with other things, you know, with skin or something. Anyways, um, but a really good example of that is when you go into a relationship, any relationship, but let's put a, a specific love relationship. You are in a love relationship. And I always say that a, the difference between a good relationship and a bad relationship is that, you know, be yourself, make it simple. So here it is. So there is this individual and this other individual. There's two individuals that they are the way that they are, period. They met each other, they like each other. I said they need to step out of themselves for a moment and get into this other circle where both of them are in the inside of the same circle. And the biggest problem that comes up right there, and that's a misconception about, about being yourself, is that these individuals, they start exchanging, right? And if one of the individuals doesn't exchange with the other or is not willing to exchange, start saying like, oh my gosh, you want to change me. This is who I am. And the other person is like, well, you're hurting me. You're messed up. Are you saying that you're a messed up person and you're not willing to modify that? Not even for the relationship. See, that's where the misconception is. People think that being yourself is being an asshole, right? And, and, but you don't feel or think of yourself like an ass. It's, it's just somebody else is letting you know, this is what you're doing. And, and people are, you know, uh, being behind this, shield of misconception shield that says this is who i am you want to accept me or not well it all depends right if you're inside of this circle where you want to have a, a a relationship you need to be willing to be the new yourself the new you every time see because mm -hmm. there is principles in the universe and the only constant is change Right. And we change and we are pushed to change. That's why we are in a relationship, right? Because you're pushing yourself to make some changes, some adjustments for yourself. So who you are, you are that person that you are an ass, but then you come to the conclusion that you're hurting somebody and you can choose to don't be, you are that person. You are the person that you don't hurt that person anymore and you can see your behavior and you can see and you decide to be better or not. See, being yourself is be willing to have that character, to have that essence that you're born with, to be that soul that you are, but also be willing to transform yourself every second of the step, every step, every second of your life when change is presented and you don't wanna just hold still because nothing is gonna move you, nothing is gonna Nothing is going to make you to have any type of change, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's the willingness to be, to have that character, to have all that combination of education, genes, uh, 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 influences from the stars, Mercury fucking retrograde, whatever it is, but also willing to step into the next second and the next moment of your life where you really realize that okay, this is who I am. I am somebody that has, I'm expanding just like the universe. I am in polarity, just like the universe. I adapt just like the universe and I have direction just like the universe. 
those four principles rule our life every day. And that help us to be who we are, not who we were. Because I always said that we are now who we really are in the future already, who we are already. And because we're building ourselves in that way. And at the end, comes down again to the biggest power of everything, choice. Mm. But that's that, that, that would be that, that definition for me, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. I think, you know, the big takeaway there for me is, is so true what you said is everything's changing always, right? Every, everything in this material universe is always changing. The yogis would say that every, the only thing that doesn't change is your soul and, and God. That's the only thing that's infinite, that's never changing, that's always pure, that's untouched, untarnished, that cannot be affected by anything. But everything else is always changing, always, you know, growing, dying, being created, being destroyed. And in recognizing that if we're not changing, then what are we doing, you know, in a relationship? We're not changing, if we're not looking at improving ourselves, our behavior, our mentality, our spiritual well-being our physical health then what do we do then we're dying right we're <laughs> uh we're can all you, dying slowly you, every day anyway but <laughs> can you imagine when you're gonna reborn for those that believes in reincarnation you're gonna reborn and you're going through a spaceship and the these couple extraterrestrials are checking out do you have your backpack yes you have all the things yes all, all all the the consciousness that you have in your in your in your soul in your in your consciousness, yes, perfect. Wait a second. Um, you're, do you know that you're born as a Mexican now? Okay, okay. Do you know that you used to hate Mexicans? Wait, what? Yeah, you used to hate Mexicans in the, in the previous life. You cannot do this this time. Now you're gonna pay for it. Welcome like, to your karma. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, it's so true. It's so funny. And that, I mean, you can, if you've done past life, this is a crazy story. We could, we, we're going to have to do, I know we're running out of time. There's so many things actually keep coming up there. I want to talk to you about this, that session I did with you. Uh, remember when, when you got that, um, the job for the, the mushroom coffee company, doing oh, yes. graphic design and websites and stuff. And you're like, and you were bringing me along with you and you're like, yeah, he can, he needs to be here to work with me. And, um, because you were really just helping me out. I mean, I was, I would have been lost without you at that time. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, yeah, he can do all this stuff. And like, good. Like, I saw your capacity. Okay. Yeah, you, you, saw, you saw, you saw, you saw accept, my potential. You need to start accepting that shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah, you, can you do websites? I was like, yeah. They're like you can do uh, graphic design. Yeah. You can do this. You can do that video editing. Yeah. 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 I'd never done any of it. I was just I like, know, know. same thing. I knew that I could do it also. Like in turning, I was like, yeah, of course I can. Like I was so, I had so much belief. And, and a part of that was like, I was with you. I'm like, well, I'll figure it out. He'll teach me. Well, you know, it's like, I'll figure it out and I'll do a good job. And we did do a good job for them. Actually, we did a really yeah, good job. For yeah, them. we did. <laughs> we did their websites and marketing and business cards and flyers and grew their, you know, sales people and did all kinds of stuff. Anyway, we were in their office one day and you took me through some kind of what I thought was like a healing. I don't remember why. I think I was telling you something I was going through and you're like, well, let's do this session. And I think you actually took me through a past life regression. Do you remember that? Yeah, I have a, a I have a, one of the methods that I have is a past life regression. I might do it a little bit different, a little tiny different than whatever they have in hypnotherapy out there. Uh, because since little, I, I believe that I can see the souls. <laughs> so uh, yes, we did. A, 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 it was a process of a past life. So I, ne I never asked you that until now. I, I, I had that feeling that it was a past life regression. I didn't know because, because I saw myself as a Yeti. You remember that? I remember now, yes. <laughs> and you're like, 
You're like, look down at your feet. I looked down at my feet. I just started laughing. I had a laugh attack. I couldn't stop freaking laughing because they were so big and furry in the area. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> I looked at my body. I was like a full-blown Yeti. And I'm like, what is going on? I was just cracking up, you know. And, and then, but how I was, tra- like, uh, how I was traveling was through, like, teleportation, um, but, like, yeah. portals. Yes. Here's the crazy thing. Here's why I never thought of that as like a past life regression until until recently was because there's there's a modern day like a a spiritual teacher from India today. He goes by Sri M and uh, he talks about the yetis actually seeing Hold on, the Shri, you mean like shrimp? Uh Sri S R I S R I and then just the oh. letter M. M. Okay, got Shri it. Got it. M. It talks Spanish about people. actually seeing yetis in India and the yetis exist and they actually have these and I've heard about it somewhere else that they actually have the and they stay hidden from humanity with certain powers and they actually have these ability to travel like interdimensionally like through portals and things like that and I'm like what wait what what are you guys talking about like it, it was crazy to hear this I'm like I had this exact freaking experience in uh, in a hypnosis session, in a meditation that Arturo guided me through when I was like 21 years old, you know, like yeah. whatever it was, 16 years ago. And I'm like, and I did all these things. And then you guys were talking about that actually living today, yetis can do all these things. And it was crazy because the crazy thing about it was you didn't influence one thing about that process, right? I remember the whole process and all yeah. you did was ask questions the whole time. Look down, what do you see? Look up, what do you see? Where are you going now? What do you want to do? What, you know, and all that stuff. And it was like, all these things happened. And then I came out of it, I was like, that was crazy. There's, I just saw of it as like a self-healing, self-loving thing, not as like a past life thing. And now I look back, I'm like, maybe I actually really was a Yeti in a past life. <laughs> well, you're, you're living the beer now. You're getting back into your furry self. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, my feet, my feet don't, they're not as furry though, so you know. <laughs> oh my gosh! No, yeah, I remember that was really, really cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was really healing though, too, because I remember at the end you had me look in the mirror and then, and then hug myself and love myself and then merge those two into one. I remember I was like crying at one point. Like it was a really powerful experience, actually, super powerful. Yeah, no, I have a. Um... I just did uh, I found out well I have this client this lady that she was she has been suffering from she went to a doctor and she has been suffering from from fibroids on the womb in her in her uh, in her womb and uh, she has fibroids and they have she has big like a three big uh, tumors and uh, so they're gonna do a CAT scan and she came to me and so I'm asking her some questions so I'm doing an assessment I look at her magnetic field I'm like okay I think that I said you have a traumatic I think that you this is coming from a traumatic event and she's like uh, how come so I started uh, getting more into the assessment and um, I found out that something that happened to her before so I decided to do a time frame regression I, I have a method that is it's, it's all other regression that I do it's a time frame so I went there uh, rescript and reframe the the what happened to her and uh so she told me that the next day the very next day she started having a lot of cramps that night but the, the next day a lot of blood started coming out of her body like a lot of blood and she said that, she described like a, it's like a little alien come out of my body and and i'm like a, okay and she said and guess what i said okay what happened she said everything is tough after the first day everything is tough uh, three days after I went to to have my CAT scan because she had a lot of pain and um, they did a CAT scan and they said, uh, well, you don't have tumors anymore. You don't have fibroids. Uh, you have liquid like if something burst. Mm. You have the liquid that shows that something just burst and uh, but you don't have it anymore. Probably you might have a little tiny one that as the size of the uh, the size of the point of a pencil or something which is she's like a it was the healing i said i don't know what it was but the good thing is that you don't have them anymore you know <laughs> because what happens is once a lot of people think 
that we we supposed to suffer because that's our punishment not necessarily if we get the lesson you know I, I i understand that all of us we've been through things to become who we are today the question is do we need to go through that in order to to become who we are today not necessarily right. it, it, life always gives us the option to you, you which way you want to learn it through suffering and pain or through understanding and we need to just practice to become better in the way that we understand things. And that's, that's why my, my entire little purpose, Nate, is, is just to help people to heal. It's, it's very simple for me. If somebody feels stuck, it doesn't matter if it's for a day or, or, or a decade or whatever time it is, it is, if there is a rule for me. If you feel stuck about anything or you can't see future, you cannot see direction or anything, something is trying to come out and tell you i need healing period it needs to be healed and then you need to reprogram because a lot of people goes into healing and they say oh it's the brain is that the truth is that it's our entire body and as i said we we've been teach to live in planetary time instead of universal time see planetary time has a different vibration than universal time in planetary time we live in a 24 7 365 so tomorrow at 10 a.m today at 10 a.m tomorrow is going to be 10 a.m okay that's it so it's always the same time so the formula there is time equals time we live in a circle and in a cycle right but then when we go back and says like okay 10 years ago we go back in time 10 years ago the reality of our universe and our planet is like a, we keep moving. We're not in the same space that we were 10 years ago. I call that universal time. Universal time allows you to be a little bit healthier, you know, allows you to be a little bit more uh, successful in whatever way you want to be. Because in this vibration, you don't have the, the to be stuck in time. Because the formula here would be distance equals time. So and distance requires actions, and that is going to be making your time to be in a different perception, because at the end, your life is built by your perception, how you perceive life subconsciously or consciously that's how your life is going to be. But when you measure time by distance, you can speed up or slow down or don't move, but in time. You almost never move. If you if you think about it in time just it's time you know next week is going to be next week in the morning and then you look back and you're like oh where's my black hair <laughs> where where's my curly long hair oh you're bald <laughs> it's like it's gone time is gone but in a distance it doesn't matter because you keep moving forward because you keep doing something for yourself and from others if that's your purpose if that makes sense so healing and reprogramming that is that is pretty much that is my passion is mm. healing and reprogramming and creating good experiences Every, and everybody needs it <laughs> all of us need it <laughs> uh and and with the time thing yeah i mean time is just a measurement i mean that's the reality right it's like we just measure the distance that it takes to go somewhere if you stop the measurement does time actually exist exactly I mean, exactly. that's why I wrote this whole thesis that was arguing against uh, your gentleman there on the wall, <laughs> the theory of relativity. Oh, yeah. This, that, you know why I have it here, right? Uh-uh. Oh, you, you have no idea why I have it here? I don't know. I've been telling everybody, you know, I respect everything. You know, I respect smart people. I respect not smart people. I, I have respect for everybody but i don't agree with certain things when they told me that he was little and he defended a kid on the school that the the teacher was taking advantage because the teacher was saying that god exists or doesn't exist and evil exists and einstein start start telling start telling the um the teacher okay um does darkness exist the teacher says yes and einstein says no it's just an absence of light. Whoa. I, we didn't pay attention to the question, but anyways, whoa. 
<laughs> and then he's like, uh, does God exist? And the teacher, uh, no, do, does evil exist? And the teacher says, yeah. I said, no, it's an absence of God. Whoa. I said, motherfucker, wait a second. Does dark, darkness exist? Yes, it does. Even if it's when there is an absence of light, but it does exist. <laughs> right? Does evil exist? Um, do you want any more proof? <laughs> <Just> <laughs> do you want any more proof? What I mean is just a perspective. And that's why I have this because it's always reminding me to be more honest and accept when we are wrong. You know, accept when we are wrong. And I have it here, not because I super admire, I admire his work, but I don't admire the bullshit. So it reminds me, Arturo, never become a bullshitter. Mm. <laughs> and, and try to catch yourself if you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, I love it. Me. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. No, I mean, brilliant man for sure. But yeah, we can, we can the intellect, uh, Will will get us into trouble if we if we allow it to, right? Um, yeah. And just bullshit ourselves and others, uh, trying to convince ourselves of something so extraordinary when sometimes it's so much more simple than that. So um, I know we've only got a few minutes left. I still want to talk to you about some other things, but um, um, maybe we'll have to do this again in the future uh, if you're up for it. Yeah. This has been. No, it's been awesome, Arturo. It's been so good to reconnect with you. And uh, you always bring such interesting perspectives to my life and interesting things to think about and laughter and joy. And uh, it's, no, it's been really awesome to, uh, to reconnect with you. And um, yeah, how can people get in touch with you? If they, I mean, I know you do coaching and you have online programs and you've got a lot going on like what's the best place for people to follow you and connect your website all that stuff so i'm a weird social creature so i'm not exactly social but somebody does social for me apparently i don't know i don't have a lot of following uh i've been kind of underground my entire life but uh my website is uh arturo gaitan with i instead of y for gaitan um, I think that in English people uh, pronounce it Gaitan, uh, ArturoGaitan.com, and uh, I'm having, um, and I have, people can, can know a little bit more probably how I work. I have an app. My app is called Arturo, just the name A-R-T-U-R-O. That's my app in, in the App Store and in the Google Play. Wow, I did you, got, you got lucky with that, just your first name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and then um, there I have a, like a free seven day transmutation meditation It's a it's a meditation that I come up with a long time ago that uh, helps you to uh, reprogram they can try and check it out. I have a I have an upcoming event on the October eight is uh, it has to do talking about where all the the key of all your suffering starts in this lifetime that has to do with the womb is the, the the event is going to be called womb like a, the womb the way when we are inside of our moms during pregnancy is going to be womb and they can access that in arturogaitan.com forward slash womb there is a, a a simple page where they can um they can uh submit a form so we can send them an invitation i'm just going to send invitations to whoever subscribe there and uh, it's, it's for a little webinar that I'm going to do on the 8th, where, where I'm going to be explaining a, a lot of the things that I do. And uh, because I'm updating one of my programs, I have a program that it, it has to do with, it's 100% healing and reprogramming. And it's coming in, uh, the update is starting in um, November, but uh, I, I, I want to give some information before that. And this is a program that been in the market for probably three to four years already. I have a, a, a big group of people that have it done and uh, I'm doing an update and I'm going to do it live. So it's going to be more comprehensive. It's already a monster of program. I'm, my purpose is to create a mega monster. So nobody else needs <laughs> any more uh, psychiatry or, 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 or medicine or, or, or drugs or things like that. But, uh, yeah, if they, if they want to, uh, look up to that and, uh, 
I have a little store. Also, I own a little metaphysical store in San Diego. It is called Be Intuitive. And uh, they find me there and uh, they find me online as uh, ArturoGaitan.com. And if they want to check it out, what's coming uh, forward slash womb. And for that specific event, or I guess that in Instagram, I think that my name is Don Arturo. I think that is D-O-N, like a Mr. Arturo. Uh, but in Spanish, Don Arturo, D-O-N, and then Arturo, or Don Arturo Gaitan, something like that. And uh, I think that I have Facebook too. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. Man, you know I'm a little introverted with all that uh, social thing, but uh, Arturo, yeah, I, 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 I found you on. Uh, okay, you have the Be Intuitive Center on Instagram. You have Arturo Metaphysics on Instagram. That one. Okay. That one. That's, see, I don't even know that. <laughs> Arturo Metaphysics. There. Now I'm following you. Awesome. Oh, you got a little baby Yoda on there, it looks like. <laughs> So Arturo Gaitan, that's G-A-I-T-A-N, ArturoGaitan.com. Um, you do sessions with people too as well, right? Individual <laughs> sessions. And then forward slash womb for that upcoming webinar. So awesome, dude. Thanks so much for coming yeah. on the podcast. It's been, uh, yeah, it's been a real, truly, truly awesome to reconnect with you. Yes, yeah, senor. Me too. Very nice to see you and uh, say hi to all the family. And uh, send you a lot of blessings, a big hug for everybody. And, uh, you know, always sending good the sprinkle of magic for having a lot of good life and a lot of uh, happiness. And just, just get in peace and be happy and enjoy this um, countdown that life is. It's a freaking countdown and we, it's our responsibility to live the best that we want to understand or not it doesn't really matter but at the end is is your life and you decide how you want it to be and at the end you're not going to able to take not even your body but you can take all your experiences you can take all your feelings you can take everything with yourself and that's the scary part you're going to come back at some point with all those experiences back so you fuck it up you're going to have to pay for it that's the law <laughs> that's the law <laughs> so let's let, let's do the so, best so do the best that you can now <laughs> yes thank you thank you i yeah. really appreciate it oh uh, thank you thank you really uh, appreciate you so much all right man all right see ya talk to you soon bye thank you for listening to the nathan crane podcast Please make sure to subscribe and share this on social media. Then head over to NathanCrane.com for your free ebook. So when we're talking about, you know, what are these underlying causes and conditions of these chronic diseases, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, they all have very similar, if not identical causes. And that's the thing is when we get to the root cause of these diseases, we can not only prevent these diseases from ever happening, but empower our bodies to heal from them. In every one of our cells, we have tens and hundreds of thousands of chemical reactions that are happening every second that are cycling uh, back and forth. It's like sort of a, a yin and yang. And you know, for me, the soul, soul's purpose is evolution. It doesn't care about comfort, it cares about evolution. Mm. And so I think so long as we are following our soul, then we will evolve. And I think what sometimes blocks us from living our purpose, from manifesting that next level of our expression, is we have not evolved. There is also a time for letting go all the expectations and relax and just breathe and be grateful what, for what you have achieved.